So allow me to share my screen. Uh, as per my uh, experience in the past, I always discuss these two topics, linear and Bernoulli's equation uh, simultaneously. So after one, I'll discuss the other. It's because in terms of the form class, they are really very uh, more or less similar or related. And the way they are handled is also quite similar. So there's just something that we're going to add on to the procedure and something that we're going to add on to the form if we're talking about about the Bernoulli's equation. So uh, for now, I'm going to review you or ask for any feedback on what you have listened to regarding the discussion on linear differential equations, first order linear differential equations specifically. So in terms of form, your uh, First order differential equation is said to be linear if it has these very three important characteristics. So in the left side of your DE, you should have the presence of the derivative. So this is your derivative. And added to that is the product of the unknown function, the Y, because it's the variable on the differential on top of your derivative and the uh, and P of X. P of X is a term or a group of terms that is uh, a function of your independent variable X. So in some books, this is written as capital P of X. Then it should be multiplied to Y. And the right side of our first order linear differential equation is Q of X. In some books, it's written as capital Q of X. By the fact that you see this is an X here, it's, it's variables or the variables present on this expression is also or are also X variables or is your independent variable X. So there should only be, there should only be uh, two terms that should be seen in your first order linear differential equation. The derivative the product of your unknown function to an expression in terms of your independent variable, and on the right side, an expression in terms of the independent variable only. So your DE is said to be linear if it has this particular form. Now, if it is already linear, because majority of the linear uh, first order DE and Bernoulli's equation plus as they are given, they are not looking linear you are the one who are to check whether they are really linear. So you are to make them conform to this form of a linear first order differential equation. Okay, now if you have already established that your DE is linear based on this form, the first step that you're going to do is determine the integrating factor. It's phi, so it's represented by phi, and it's equal to E raised to the integral of P of X dx. The P of X here that you have identi identified based on the form of your linear first order DE. So you're going to integrate the exponent of this exponential function. Now, that is your fee already. The second part is you will evaluate the integral of the product of Q of X and phi that you're seeing here. Some of my students don't anymore perform this separately. So what they do after they have already determined the integrating factor, they go straight to the formula. This is the formula of the solution of your linear first order DE. Now, what do you have in this formula? You have here your unknown function, which is being multiplied multiplied rather to the integrating factor, which you have determined first and foremost. That's on the left side. And the right side is an integral constituting of the product of your Q of X and your predetermined integrating factor. So the product of these two, you will evaluate the integral of, and then that's it. You already have the solution of your linear first order differential equations. Very simple, just you have to make sure that your DE is first and foremost linear. 
it has to be similar to this particular form that you are seeing here. If it's not linear, you're not supposed to uh, solve. You're not supposed to solve it using the procedures that are given in here. Okay? So first establish that it is linear, then solve it as a linear differential equation. Now I have here one example of a first order linear differential equation. As I have mentioned a while ago, seldom can you find a book which gives you a linear D written already in the standard form. The form that was shown to you in here. This is the standard form. Most of the time, you are to do some manipulation. That way, you will have a form that is comparable to that of a linear first order DE. Now, in this case, the first thing that you have to do, class, if the differential equation that is given to you doesn't look linear and you want to check whether it's linear, you need to first specify the derivative. So in this case, you already have the derivative and that's dy dx. Once the derivative is already specified, you make sure that its coefficient is only one. As you could see here, your derivative has a coefficient, which is x. So that does not conform to this form because your derivative here has only a coefficient of one. So what you're going to do is, in this case, you know that already in your algebra, if you want to eliminate something that is multiplied to anything, you need to divide. But in this case, you need to divide the entire equation. So you need to divide the entire equation by x. Now, when you do that, you have isolated already the derivative. And then you distribute. Or shall I say, you divide the y and the 4 in here by x. So you have y over x. And this 4 was transferred to the right side of the equation. And as such, it's made into negative 4 over x. Now, ever wonder why this 4 was transferred to the other side? It's primarily because we want to make our DE similar in form to a linear DE. So if you transfer your negative 4, over x to the right side, this is now your q of x. It's an expression in terms of the independent variable x. And in here, since you have the y, the thing that is being multiplied to the y is your p of x. And that thing is 1 over x. So upon knowing already the p of x and the q of x, you go to step 1. Because you already anyhow rendered the form of your first order DE linear. So you determine the integrating factor. So it's E raised to the integral of P of X, which is 1 over X DX. When you evaluate this, this is LN of X. And from your differential calculus, E raised to an LN is equivalent to 1. As such, your E raised to LN of X is now X. This is now your integrating factor. So the last term is simply you follow the formula, which is y times the phi. In this case, your unknown function is y, so you have here a y. If this is a v, let's say this is dv dx, this should be v because the, this one is your unknown function. So it depends on what's the variable that is written on top of the derivative or on the differential in the numerator of your derivative. So in this case, it's y and it's multiplied to phi. What is your phi? That's your x. So you have here y times x. This side, your q of x, if you look at it, your q of x actually is negative 4 over x. Now you need to multiply it with the phi, which is x dx. So that cancels the x in here, leaving you with a negative 4 dx. So the integral of this is negative 4x plus c. So what's done, this negative 4x was transferred to the left side, making it plus 4x. And this is now the solution of your uh, linear first order differential equation. It doesn't look linear first, but it was made to look like 1. Now, if you cannot make your given differential equation similar in form to a linear first order DE, then don't solve it as a linear DE. It's not then linear. Okay? Now, any questions?
Okay, none. So actually, I only gave one sample problem here, and that's the end for your first order um, linear differential equation. So I will give you another example. So let me go to the board. Page plus. Allow me to share my screen and solve a different example for linear first order de so we'll have another one okay let's say we'll have this number two okay we'll try this one one that contains trigonometric functions and it doesn't really look linear. So you have here one plus cosine of x y prime equal to sine of x times sine of x plus sine of x cosine of x minus y. As it is given, who would think that this is linear? So it's only after you have checked whether this is separable, this is not separable, which is uh, which will let you go to the next. Is this homogeneous? This is not homogeneous. By inspection, it's never homogeneous. And if you're going to test for exactness, I'm sure this is not exact as well. So then there's the time you're going to go to linear. So you try to check whether this particular uh, differential equation is linear. So it doesn't look linear, so you have to make it linear. So what you're going to do first is, if possible, uh, expand or simplify an expression. That way, when you make it linear, you will not have to carry on or you need not copy all the functions that appear on it. So if you look very closely here to our DE, this one has a sine of x and this one has a sine of x and these terms are separated by a plus sign. So from your algebra, you know that whenever you have a similar factor for terms, you need to factor out though that particular factor. So we will just do that, although this may not be your first step. You may Your first step could be that you eliminate the one plus cosine of x here because you want to isolate the y prime. You can do that by division. But in this case, let's say we'll try the simplifying, simplifying the right side of your equation first. So if you'll do that, you will have an expression which is sine of x, and then you will have here sine of x. And here for the first term, it's one. The second term would be cosine of x. Since this one does not have anything in common with the first two, then you just simply copy. Now, if you look very closely, now I have something in common with the simplified form of the right side of this equation to what is written on the left, okay? But as I said, this could be uh, this could be not your first step. It depends on you and how you're going to simplify your DE. That way, in form, it would look linear. So this is now your DE. Now, of course, we have to make it linear, <clears throat> and and we need to isolate this one. You need to isolate your y prime rather by dividing the entire equation by one plus the cosine of x. <clears throat> so how do we take the one plus cosine x expression? Simple, your algebra teaches you that. You divide the entire equation by one plus cosine of x. Now, when you do that, you will have y, y prime left on the left side. Now, if this one plus cosine of x is used as a divisor for these terms, you have actually two terms only, this group here and this product of sine x and y, you will get rid of the one plus cosine x on the first, leaving you with sine squared x. Whereas this one, since you don't have a one plus cosine x will be minus. So if you distribute the sine x here, that would be sine x over one plus the cosine of x. And you have here the y. It doesn't look linear, but it's getting nearer to the form of a linear DE. 
So I'll keep the derivative here and I'd like to transfer this expression on the left side. So I have now y prime plus, I'll have the sine of x over one plus cosine of x times y. Where did this came from? This one, the negative sine of x over one plus cosine of x here on the right side when transferred to the left will be positive. This one does not have a y. It's a function only of your independent variable x. So I'll keep it here on the right side. So I'll have sine squared x. Now, if you look intently, the original differential equation that does not look linear is now linear. So this is your derivative y prime. This is your P of X. This is your Y. And this is your Q of X. So it's now linear. So always do the process of putting it in the form that it is linear already. So when you're done with the making sure that your D is linear, you determine the integrating factor and that's your phi. So in some books, the phi is represented as the mu. But what is important in whatever representation that may be, you know what you're, you're determining. And that's the integrating factor. So this is E raised to the integral of, this is your P of X. So sine of X over one plus cosine of X DX. If you're going to evaluate this integral class, that's already your calculus, okay? So you look closely, this is rational and you may check if you set this as the u, what's the du of the one plus cosine x? That's actually negative sine x dx. So the one that you have in the numerator needing only the negative sign. So since you place a negative sign here, that changes the original. So you place a negative sign outside. Then your integral already present in the argument of your exponential function here. We mean with argument is the exponent of your exponential function is already integrable. So this is e raised to negative, that would be ln of one plus the cosine of x, okay? Now this negative one can be written as the exponent of this. So you'll have something as e raised to the ln of one plus the cosine of x raised to negative one. Well, what, why will I do this? It's because I want this one simplified. This is equal to one. So that leaves you with one plus cosine of x raised to negative one, which is actually one over one plus the cosine of x. This then is your phi. Your one plus cosine of x raised to negative one is this in written in fraction form, and that's your phi. Once you have already your phi, the rest is substitution to the formula for a linear first order differential equation. Now, what do we have in that formula? So you have the unknown function times the integrating factor. So your integrating factor phi is one plus cosine of x. The right side is your Q of x. In this case, your Q of x is sine squared. This is your Q of x. So you place here sine squared of x and it is to be multiplied to the integrating factor. So this is your integrating factor. Now again, you will have an integral expression to evaluate. You need here the equivalent identity of the sine squared, uh, which is one minus cosine squared x. This one minus cosine squared x actually, I'll write it here, is one minus cosine x and one plus cosine x. If you, mod, if you multiply these two binomial expression, it will give you this uh, one minus cosine squared expression, okay? So your sine squared of x is this equivalent identity. There's a need for you to write this one in this form that way, you know already what I'm up to do. Like to simplify my rational expression. So the right side now, the integral on the right side would look like the integral of one minus cosine of x 
times one plus cosine of x. And you have the denominator one plus cosine of x dx. So in here, you can see that it's possible for you to simplify. So this cancels out, leaving you with the integral of one minus the cosine of x. And what's the integral of one minus the cosine of x? So the integral of dx for the one here is x. And the integral of the negative cosine of x dx is positive sine of x. And of course, you place the c. Now, your left side is still y over 1 plus the cosine of x. If you want to simplify the solution to your linear DE and write it in explicit form, cross multiply 1 plus cosine x to the right side. So you will have like this. y is equal to 1 plus the cosine of x which was already cross multiplied from the left side to the right. And you have this. You have x minus sine x plus c. This is already the explicit solution to your linear first order differential equation. So actually, this one is already the solution. I only simplified it. That way, it would be written explicitly. Okay, any questions? Okay, if there's none, let me stop sharing and we'll go to the Bernoulli situation. Let me check also. Bernoulli equation. So let me share a new slide. So this is your Bernoulli's equation. Can you see the slide glass? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is your Bernoulli's equation. In terms of form class, okay, in terms of form, it's comparable to the first order differential equation, uh, linear. The only thing that differs it from the linear form is this one, the y raised to n. Now, it's, this is not present in your linear DE. In this case, n should not be equal to zero because if your n here is equal to zero, this will now be linear. It will not anymore be Bernoulli. If your n here in the y is one, it will be now separable because you can transfer the p of x, y on the right side, factor out the y, and then you can separate variables in that process. So these two are important requisites for the n. That way your DE is said to be a Bernoulli equation. So same with linear. The one, the terms that you have on the left side are the same. They only differ on what's written on the right side. In terms of determining the integrating factor, you only need to add one minus n. The constant one minus n on the integral of p of x dx. In terms of the solution, actually the solution is very similar to that of the linear. You only added this exponent to the y, your unknown function, and you also added this constant to the product of q of x and phi on the right side of your DE. In terms of the form, it's quite similar to that of the linear DE. Only this made it different. So then that makes it a Bernoulli's equation, okay? Now, I think the solution to the problem on the next slide was already discussed, but let me just go through it again. That way uh, you will understand. So the way the equation here, the differential equation is written, you will never think that it is Bernoulli. So unlike the example that was given to you for linear differential equations, in here you have to specify your derivative. So your derivative here is dy dx, okay? So the original equation 
this original equation was divided by dx. Okay? As you can see, it was divided by dx. Now, if you already have the derivative dy dx, it's important for both linear and Bernoulli's equation that you isolate it, meaning its coefficient should only be the constant one. So since you need to eliminate the 2x here, you also divide by 2x. Okay? So meaning the entire differential equation that you have here will be divided by 2x dx and will yield this particular expression. Now, I think you know already why you have 6y cubed minus xy minus y in here in the numerator. It's because you have the expansion of this term in here. Okay. Now, the question maybe is why, why not the derivative should, why should not your derivative be dx dy? Because it could also be dx dy. Why dy dx in particular? Okay. Anybody who knows the answer why it should be dy dx, not dx dy? Na abi, tika na anad na kami miss na dy dx. No, it could also be dx dy. So why d why dy dx in this case, not dx dy? Anyone? Okay, so let me tell you the reason behind why not dx dy. You always choose the differential on top of your derivative, which has the simplest coefficient. So kinalan, if you look for a derivative, for a differential equation in which the derivative is not specified, the differential that should be written on top of that derivative, in this case that's dy, should have the simplest coefficient of the two. You cannot have a dx dy in this case because that would require you to divide by this expression so that you can eliminate this set of this polynomial here when expanded is this one so you can eliminate it from your derivative. That will complicate things for you. So when you choose for a derivative, appropriate derivative for a differential equation in which the derivative is not specified, make sure that the differential on top of that derivative has the simplest coefficient in your differential equation. So in this case, that should be dy dx. Now in here, what's happening in here is you already see, you could already see uh, that you have here y cubed. So that would already tell you something like this could be Bernoulli because it has y, so it has y raised to n. Now this one has the y, so what was done actually plus it's factored out. So if I'm going to simplify this part, and I hope you you already or you also did it. So I will place it here plus and have here dy dx. What was done actually is uh, you have negative y, this one multiplied to you have here the x plus one. X plus one multiplied to negative y will be negative x y and negative y. Okay, and it has also a divisor of two x. So you'll have the two x. This one, you transfer here on the right side. So that would be negative six over, you have also the divisor here, two X. The Y cube, we isolate, that way it will look Bernoulli. So it looks something like this now, because you simplified this one, that made it three, and this one is this. So you have already here the minus sign in here for the Y. When you determine the integrating factor, you pick out the P of X, but make sure that you include its sign. So in this case, it's negative. So you include it and you add to it the constant one minus N. In this problem, your N is equal to three. So one minus N is negative two, and you have the integral of negative X plus one over two X. Actually, this has a DX here. If you will distribute class, it will be something like e raised to the integral of. So I'll place this negative and negative outside. So I will place two in. Uh, actually, these two will cancel each other. Negative, negative will be positive. So you will have an x over x. So you will have one. And in here, you have one over x. So plus one over x. 
dx. So if you will process the integral, you will have an e raised to x plus ln of x. This will yield an x and this is ln of x, which is equivalent in terms of the rules of exponent to e raised to x times e raised to ln of x. Now this one is equal to one, the e raised to ln. So then that simplifies further your phi to this x e raised to x. So this is your phi already. Once you have your phi, you also follow the formula for determining the solution of a Bernoulli's equation. Now let me clear my markings here. So uh, you will now substitute this x e raised to x, your integrating factor to the solution of your dE. So this is your y raised to 1 minus n. Your phi is x e raised to x. This one is negative 2. Your q of x is negative 3 over x as shown to you. Your q of x here is negative 3 over x. So you place it in here. And this is your uh, phi. In that case, you will have, you can cancel the x here. And you will have to multiply this two, so that would make it positive six integral of e raised to x dx. Okay, now this one is y raised to negative two, and your phi is x e raised to x. Now, if you process the integral of this, that would be e raised to x, so six e raised to x plus c, and this one would be equivalent to x e raised to x over y squared. The over y squared or the y squared in the denominator can be transferred to the right side by multiplication. So this is now the solution to your Bernoulli equation. Any question? Any question here? Okay, so let me stop sharing. I just repeated anyhow what you've listened to last week, okay? So I'll give you a different example for Bernoulli's equation. We'll have another slide. Here. Okay, so this would be our second example for Bernoulli's equation. Let me check. What example do we have for Bernoulli's equation? Okay, we can have 2x cubed y prime equal to y times y squared plus 3x squared. Okay, it doesn't look Bernoulli, but we can make it look like 1. So if you do expansion here, you'll have y cubed plus 3x squared y. And you will copy only what you have here on the left side. If you will isolate the derivative, we need to divide by 2x cubed. So you'll be left on the left side, y prime. And here on the right side, you will have, I'd like to have these two first. So you have 3x squared over 2x cubed y. I think you know what I'm doing. Plus you have 1 over 2x cubed times y cubed. Okay, this will constitute my q of x, y raised to n, and this one simplified will constitute my p of x, y. Now, if we will simplify first our p of x, we can get rid of the y squared here that leaves us with an x here. Hi. So the left side would be y prime. And if you'll transfer this to the left, that would be negative. And you have 3 over 2x times y. And on, on the right side, you have 1 over 2x cubed y cubed. Now, in this form, your DE is already a Bernoulli's equation. Okay. 
we have made it loop or we did make it conform to the form of a Bernoulli's equation. So you have your derivative, you have your P of X, you have your Y, you have your Q of X, and you have your Y raised to N. So in this case, your N is equal to three. By the way, your N can be negative. It can be a fraction, it can be a decimal. Of course, as long as it's not zero and one, then you have a Bernoulli's equation. So this is our Bernoulli's equation, okay? If we determine its integrating factor, that would be e raised to one minus three integral of, so whatever is our p of x there. So your p of x is negative three over two x. So don't forget the negative. So you have negative three over two x dx. This negative, two here will cancel with the negative two in here, which simplifies our integrating factor into the form, this two and two, negative, negative. So this would leave us with three dx over x. Negative, negative, positive, the twos will cancel, leaving you with the three over x. So this is the argument of your exponential function. This is e raised to three ln of x, which is equivalent to e raised to the ln of x cubed, which is equivalent to x cubed because this one is one, okay, as discussed. So your phi is already x cubed. Then you will substitute this integrating factor to the formula of a Bernoulli's equation. So you have the unknown function raised to one minus n. The phi is x cubed. We will integrate on the right side, one minus n still, our q of x. So what's our q of x? Our q of x is one over two x cubed. So I'll place here one over two x cubed. This is my q of x. And what's my phi? That's x cubed, dx. So this is my one minus n. So I have several things that I can cancel to simplify before I integrate. So this is negative two. So what is left here is negative one. I'll cancel it with this. I'll cancel it with this. Leaving me on the right side with the negative integral of dx. And that is negative x plus c. Your left side here could be written as x cubed over y squared because this one will be negative two. You can simplify that way. You will not have a fraction here. So your solution now is x cubed equal to y squared times c minus x or negative x plus c. So this is the solution of your Bernoulli's equation, okay? Using the three-step procedure, actually, duha lang man. It becomes a three-step procedure if your DE, like this one, is not yet uh, in terms of form Bernoulli's equation. So you have to make sure. So sometimes, uh, kung hindi mo siya pag-i-check kung it's really Bernoulli, Bernoulli's equation in form and you solve it using Bernoulli's equation, it's good if it's a Bernoulli's equation. But if it's not, then your entire solution will be wrong. So it's important that you really make sure that in terms of the types of DE that we have so far discussed that will be falling on a certain particular form, you have to make sure whether it's a parable in form uh, linear in form or Bernoulli in form because the other two would require the test. So the other two that I'm referring to is your homogeneous and your exact differential equations. Okay. Now, any question as to this example? So 14 students absent. Any questions, class? So everything clear here? Let me stop sharing. You have any question as to uh, your schedule this week?
Can you show 